Vinaka, welcome to GS101 class project video. The name of our group is Senses. Studying GS101, we began to learn the four core foundations of GIS, which are field survey mapping and photography, uh, GIS spatial analysis, geospatial databases, remote sensing, and image interpretation. With the knowledge and understanding of the four core foundations, we will be able to gain skills and look at the aspects of geospatial sciences, such as writing Python programs that would be applied to the real world. All throughout this semester, we've been collecting data from Lower Campus Salon, and all data that were collected were transferred into a digital environment known as Python. Our first task was to calibrate our face vector and our eye height. This task was critical because it was used to calibrate for all data collected throughout the semester. Our first fieldwork was to calculate our tree height. This was determined by our pacing factor and our bearings. Then we moved on to the traverse, which we calculate the distance from one point to another and we took its back bearing and front bearing. With all this data collected, we are able to have a vector which consists of points, lines and polygons in Python through Turtle and Zell Graphics. After vector, we moved on to raster, which is our current class project. We had to collect the Mimosa data and all data were transferred into Python. Uh, in today's field work, uh, we'll be coming out to the field, uh, collecting our uh, Mimosa data. Uh, first things first, we're come, gonna come and check our noting, which is uh, 92. Check which uh, we have been uh, standing at the right position. After that, uh, we're gonna stretch our tape, which is uh, given with a quadrant and a compass. Uh, after we stretch the tape and then uh, we'll check out uh, bearings uh, 20 degrees towards uh, CM2 uh, which is uh, northing and then uh, we'll plus it off with uh, 90 degrees which is uh, easting towards, uh, towards east sorry. Uh, and then after that we're gonna calculate it uh, if it comes up to 110 uh, then we start off uh, collecting uh, data uh, when we're done with that, we'll taking, uh, be taking at intervals of 2 meters uh, and then we start off uh, counting our mimosa uh, with 3 throws of our quadrant. Uh, after we collect all the data, we're going to book it down, we're going to head to the labs and then we're going to input it to our Excel, um, Excel uh, before we submit the data and continue the program. Now we're going to head back to the lab, uh, open our Excel and put our data for Mimos. Let's hit it. Hello everyone, we have now reached the processing part of our project. So all the data is collected from the field, we are then put it into the Excel. The inputs include all the three throws and the calculated average of each instance. From there, our group data was given to Mr. Rollins, where they, they, he compiled all the data 
uh, of the Osa Vita group that is when he created uh, one master excel sheet that was made available for us on the class trip from there three text files were then uh, made they were known as uh, the header file the geo file and the attribute file so the header file contains the information of the project data files the attribute files contains the attributes which uh, is continuous and the geo file contains the geo data values of each cell that will plot existence of mimosa on the block campus loan. In this case the geo data is the average value from the master excel. All the information in these text files we call through the geo reader and into the main map elements. Our first task is to import all our libraries, including our GeoReader, Conversion Library, and our Math and Graphics Library. Second, we are to set up our graph window. These lines of code plot the polygon and the outer traverse area. These lines of code set up the tree species according to color. Its location is retrieved from the tree data text files. These lines of code set up the Mimosa data. These lines of code plot the title of the map and the graphic window. These set of codes plot the north point in the GIS logo. Codes plot out the tree height in the legend. These set of codes plot out the tree species legend. Once the tree height and species legend was set up, then a separate legend was set up for the Mimos plot, showing the density and existence on the USB Law Campus lawn. This is the final map showing all the programmed map elements that give us an idea of the Mimosan distribution and tree placement, species and height on the lower campus lawn. This region highlighted in blue is the Mimosa survey region. Its distribution and existent density is represented by different colors indicated in the Mimosa distribution legend. The numbers on the scale represent the number of found Mimosa plants within every 2 meter easting. These highlighted regions in blue indicate the plotted trees of different species found on the lower campus lawn. The trees are plotted at their exact locations. The tree species types are differentiated with color codes, all indicated on the tree species legend highlighted in green. The tree heights are indicated as circle sizes, where bigger circles indicate taller trees. A difference between the tallest and the shortest tree is mentioned in the tree height legend that is highlighted in an orange circle. Other map elements included are the title of the map highlighted in green, the USB GIS logo in blue, the north point in red, and the citation indicating map location and cartographer names, which is the name of our group in yellow. In discussing the Mimosa distributions after our field survey and inputting all of our data into the Python environment, we have observed that the Mimosa spatial distributions are uneven in a few places. To our observation, these are places that have soils with more moisture content. Mimosa purica thrives in some places and are absent in places where even no plants grow at all. These non-existent areas are where there is less moisture and high stress and high disturbance due to sporting activities like the volleyball area. The constant trembling of feet on the smaller part of the lower campus lawn have caused a great disturbance to these species. The area of survey for Mimosa did not include the coastal areas as it is too close to the shore and is exposed to disturbance, places where only a temporary rural species such as beach morning glory would thrive. So the area was limited only to the inner USB lower campus lawn. Mimosa purica is a creeping plant. It, is, it also belongs to the P. oligium family. It is annual or perennial. There are some plants that may look similar to this species, but the distinction between them and this plant is that the compound leaves fold forward and when they touch or shaken. That's a defense mechanism where they only open up again in a few minutes. This defense mechanism may have evolved as a way to protect and also retain heat from evaporation. 
This survey has enabled us to understand the focal foundations of geospatials, which are field surveying, mapping and cartography, GIS and spatial analysis, geodatabase and programming, and last but not least is remote sensing and image interpretations. Under these foundations, we were able to conduct field works that includes the survey of mimosa plants, collecting data that was used for the creation of small scales of databases and analysis, and interpretations of results to determine the distributions of mimosa plants. With this survey results, we also included the distributions of trees on the lower campus lawn. This also helped us to apply a geographic and programming knowledge in a spatial analysis of data. That is all from our sensor group. I hope you enjoy your presentation. Nisamwadi.